everyone, welcome to a very special telecast on NewsX. Now, farmers have rejected the center's proposal to purchase five crops at MSP over the next five years and have announced that they will resume their Delhi Chalo protest. However, in this telecast, we will not be focusing into who said what and who disagrees with what, but we want to have a very genuine and progressive conversation. At NewsX today, we bring to you the real Kisan Kalyan plan. This is the first episode and we wish to understand and address the real problems that are being faced by the farmers, the kind of thought leadership that is required to inculcate a change and bring about impact on the income of farmers in a positive manner. We want to assess and analyze the ways through which we can bridge the income gap between what the farmer is earning and how this can be increased without the consumer bearing the brunt of the increased prices. The first episode, viewers, focuses on what is it that the farmer has to sell his crop at versus what is it that the vendor ultimately sells it to us as a consumer and how do we then bridge that gap without, like I said, the consumer bearing the brunt of increased prices or inflation. Taking this conversation forward with me is Dr. Ashok Kumar Mittal, Rajya Sabha MP and founder of LPU. Uh, I also have with me Himendra Mathur, who's an agri-tech expert, Indra Shekhar Singh, agri-expert also with us. And I have with me Subhash Thakur, business head of IPL biologicals and agri-tech venture once again. Let me begin this conversation with Dr. Ashok Kumar Mittal. Dr. Mittal, very interestingly, we were discussing today in our meeting the very genuine cause of how the farmers, and this is not just a phenomenon in India, it's across the world that governments have to heavily subsidize the work of farmers for the produce to in fact reach the consumer at a decent cost, at a cost that is affordable by all. However, in that, sir, when you look at the prices, say, for example, and we're running that graphics on air as well, when you say in terms of an average price of potatoes, the farmer is selling it for two, two and a half rupees per kg, whereas we are buying it at 30 rupees per kg. That's a whole gap of 28 rupees, uh, which is a cost that is added by a whole supply chain that then comes in between from where the farmer sells the produce to when it actually reaches the vendor in the cities. Is there a way, Mr. Mittal, to somewhere bridge this gap? Dr. Mittal, please unmute yourself, sir. Uh, sorry, uh, thank you very much. The, you are asking a specific questions relating to potato. I think it happens in all the products, not only in potato. I think yes, that, just, that was you know, just a regular example. So just, just one example just I was exa expressing. Example. Yeah, if I just take this question, the produce which are sold at farm and the produce which we buy in the markets, why there is a lot of different kind of price. There are different factors responsible for that, we all know. The first factor is responsible that we don't have good post-harvest management systems and techniques in our country. Once a product is sold to the sold by the farmer, so that it should go to the market. First, do we have good transportation system? Do we have good cold storage facilities? Do we have good processing units and so many things which relates to transportation or storage of the product? We lack those facilities very badly and a lot of product is wasted and lost and rotted during this process. Then there are so many intermediaries in between the process. There is local dalal, then there is a dalal at district level, then at state level. So the and their markup goes on adding so it further increases the cost and when it reaches to the market in the, the last monday 
and again sometimes it is not sold there and sometimes it is sold at very high price so what happens to take care of those changes or those limitations because of these limitations they have to keep a higher price so it price goes up Hmm. then there are very weak market linkages we don't have good marketing reforms right even today for the produce of the this kind of produce so all these things all these things make the products very costly and it when it goes in the hands of the customer it goes very very costly five times 10 sometimes 10 times and we do feel the pinch so we need to do all these kind of reforms as far as this particular part is concerned which you are asking we don't have good training programs for farmers how to store them how to transport them we don't give them the workshops which you need to do that and we do not have good technology to again save those kind of products so it also creates a problem and wastage lot of wastage happens during the process so if we are able to manage these things well and for this we need good policy reforms by the government by the state governments by the farmers themselves by the farmers associations themselves by the local so, co- cooperative society if they all work in one tandem in one way i think we can definitely reduce this cost i will give one example of wastage of product like in 2015 fruits were being wasted from 6.7% to 15.88% In 2015, again in 2022, after seven years, it is the same, 6.02 to 15.05, no improvement. We couldn't do last five, seven years anything. Vegetables, which were wasted was 4.58 percent to 12.44 percent in the year 2015. Now it has gone up to 4.8. It has gone down to 4.87 to 11.61. Again, negligible improvement. And when you talk about plantation crops and spices, wastage was 1.18 percent to 7.89 percent in 2015. 2022, it is just 1.29 to 7.33. Again, it has increased at the lower side and slightly decreased at the upper side. Okay. There is a lot of wastage. So if we take care of all these factors, I think we can manage it well. Okay. Manage the cost well at the hands of the customer. Okay, Doctor Mittal. Then does the owner somewhere lie on the center or or the the private sector to then fill in these gaps? Like you said, that perhaps one of the first steps would be the cold storage facilities that the country is lacking, and secondly, is a transportation a a, a clear transportation system. Yeah, no, I think everyone is responsible, and everyone will have to work together. There are certain things which central government is to do. There are certain things which are to be done at the level of state government. Certain things at cooperative societies, at the farmers themselves. Certain things at business level. So all these things are required. Means if we make a integrated policy and then plan, work together and plan, I think we we can definitely save it, save a cost, and save the price and reduce the price. Okay. Dr. Mittal, I'll come to you in just a moment. Imendra Mathur, agri tech expert, also with us on the broadcast. Imendra Mathur, I want to understand just you know your perspective and your uh, thoughts on how that income gap or the price gap can be reduced so that the farmer at the end of the day ends up making more than just two bucks on that one kg uh, on that uh, you know per kilo of potato versus the thirty rupees that you and I end up paying in the market. Thanks, Devika, for having me here in this uh, discussion. And uh, yeah, I think we all know about the problem statements. We already discussed about it. Let's talk about solutions. Though. And I have three proposals uh, to discuss. Look, in India, farmer is more or less a producer. You know, he produces the crop, he sells it at the time of harvest when the prices are lowest, and he most likely is selling at the nearest market yard or mandi, right? how do we migrate farmer from a mere producer to a processor to a distributor and hopefully to selling a farmer brand so the participation of farmer is limited to just one part of the value chain where he is doing most of the hard work right and leaving margins for others uh, intermediaries to make so 
I am a strong believer if you have to improve farmer income, they have to make it more stable, predictable. We need to create thousands and millions of on farm infrastructure, processing units, storage units, as Dr. Mittal was saying, and you know, help farmer participate in the value chain. So instead of he earning 30% of the consumer price, probably he can earn 60% of the consumer price. And at the same time, it's not that the consumer is paying more. It's just that farmer is able to play a much larger role than what he's playing today. So I think that is one part which we should think about. In agri-tech space, there are multiple examples of some phenomenal entrepreneurs who build this kind of infrastructure. There's a company called as far as Technologies, which has built on-farm dehydration units managed by micro-entrepreneurs, mostly women, and they are able to earn additional 10,000 rupees a month because they are sort of adding value in the chain. And I can go on and on. There's someone who's someone like Arya.ag who's built micro warehouses. There are cold chain players like Promethean, Infecold, Ecozen. So, so there are technologies available. We just need to make sure that we create this infrastructure. Who's going to create is a question mark. Yes. But I would, I would, I would say that the government has a role to play. And of course, some concessional financing uh, like through Agri Infra Fund could be one opportunity. Let me come to the second point. I think the cost of capital in Indian agriculture is very, very high. As you would uh, imagine out of about 12 to 15 crore farmers, I think still a large proportion of farmers continue to depend on informal sources of um, uh, credit. But the cost of capital is uh, you know, in the range of 2 to 5% per month, which is extremely expensive. No businesses in the world make money when the interest costs are so high. So you, we need to make institutional credit available to a large number of farmers, especially those who are small and marginal. So how do we build those mechanisms? Again, thankfully, the kind of digitization that we are seeing in Indian agriculture, which is unprecedented, it's a matter of time when we can reduce the bankers' challenges to reach out to farmers, especially for KYC, risk assessment, risk monitoring and collection. Uh, and, you know, there are some very interesting agri-fintech solutions which have already come up and I think if the mainstream banks and the regulators participate, we can make them really, really count and hopefully reduce the cost of capital for farmers. The last point I want to make, which also refers to your question and what Dr. Mittal said, is that this demand supply challenge, you know, especially for perishables, you know, it's essentially a regional arbitrage or a seasonal arbitrage, right? Now, how do we plug that? How do we make it? You know, demand doesn't change overnight. Demand, it takes years and decades for demand to change. It's that supply which fluctuates a lot, especially in potato and onions and tomato and which causes either inflation for consumers or very, very low prices for farmers. So again, there are some interesting technologies and I think the one of the biggest, I would say, one of the path breaking technologies is remote sensing. Now, with satellite image, you can predict uh, at any point of time, which crop is being grown in what farm and what is going to be the likely yield. I wouldn't say they have reached 100% accuracy, but they're getting there, probably right. 80%. And once you start estimating supply on a real-time basis, you know, you can build multiple intervention, be it by, be it by the government or the private sector, so that the, that arbitrage or that, uh, you know, that, that kind of supply demand challenges that we see can, can be reduced or can be predicted and the interventions can be built. So I think there, there is a role of technology. Of course, I'm not saying technology alone can solve for it, yes. but we, uh, we are moving in that direction. Okay, Himendra, I'll come to you in just a moment. Subhash Thakur also with us on the broadcast. Subhash Thakur, I'd like to just understand your perspective on the same as well. What then can be done as per you to ensure that somewhere the farmer is able to take his produce uh, to the consumer directly, which is something that we see in a lot of agri uh, startups today. Uh, people that have branded their produce really well and they're able to... Uh, deliver it literally to your doorstep so they're keeping a large chunk of that uh, uh, of you know the profit that they're making on these products but the actual farmer on the ground that is selling raw materials like onions potatoes tomatoes and uh, other such uh, daily uh, consumable items they're not making the sort of profit that they should be making on their produce yeah. First of all, uh, thank you, NewsX, for giving me this opportunity to share my views. 
So I'll, I'll add something more uh, other than that we have discussed. So agriculture is again a very important sector that provides food and a lot of produce to the world. But yes, it still remains a very challenging and unpredictable business. We have to take it in a, a way that uh, a farmer should uh, you know, think agriculture, cultivation of the land from as an entrepreneur point of view. So uh, that becomes very important to, you know, uh, that, that gives them their, uh, increase their views to uh, increase their income. Now, uh, still the basics around the agriculture to increase their farmer income remains the same like first is the, to increase their productivity, second is reduce their cost of production, and third is to ensure their, uh, get the right price of their produce. So uh, like a lot of uh, revolution is there around agriculture. So again, to improve upon uh, reducing their cost of uh, production, there has to be a judicious use of you know, uh, agri inputs like seeds, their nutrition management inputs, the crop disease and pest management inputs. But other than that, there are a lot of you know, various strategies wherein you know, farmer can give a thought so that, that, uh, that it could help them you know, to uh, increase their uh, income. So. Uh, Let's start with the, my, uh, the first point is the diversification of their crops. So again, uh, uh, there are a lot of studies wherein a monocropping pattern uh, has been adopted by the farmers in respective areas that uh, reduce uh, reduces their income as well as you no. Know, uh, there are various other challenges. If the farmer uh, diversify their uh, cropping pattern or intensify, or in the matter say they use relay cropping, there can be substantial you know, increase in income. I'll give an example wherein a rice or wheat mono, uh, a cropping pattern, wherein farmer uh, gets uh, a benefit of 24,000 rupees a hectare. But if they diversify it, with adding a single crop of uh, additional crop of gram in a year cycle, their income increases to 39,000 rupees a hectare. So uh, that way it can uh, helps to improve their income. Okay. Second is the implementation of their sustainable uh, you know, farming practices. Now here comes, comes in you know, farmer about the farmer producers. Now uh, the adoption of sustainable agriculture by the use of biofertilizers, biopesticide, organic fertilizers, at the same time, use of judicious use of the pesticides. So this can you know, help to also uh, benefit the environment, but also help to you know, increase the farmer income. Now the consumers are increasingly willing to pay more premium about the organic produce, or at the same time, uh, the farmers who are using these type of agriculture practices. Uh, Mr. Hemendra has also added you know, utilization of some technologies. That's again a very, uh, uh, now uh, one of the very important agriculture revolution nowadays. Like farmers can utilize a lot of you know, technolo technologies like precision agriculture, GPS, remote sensing to you know, map their crops. So they can manage their crop efficiently so that they can reduce their cost. At the same time, this will definitely help to increase their yes. uh, you know, uh, uh, the income. Uh, additional nowadays, uh, na global uh, multinational companies they are uh, working around uh, na gaining through carbon credits. So farmers in India they can give a thought to it to add on you know, uh, their income by you know, working around some sort of carbon credits. Okay. So that is again lot of things are there. Uh, the most important what I find here is the collaboration amongst the farmers, a cooperative sector that uh, can help farmer to you know, increase their income like collaboration in at a local level with their farm okay. friend so uh, that can definitely you know, help to uh, yes. bargain uh, with the market sell their produce at a better price so this can definitely add on okay add i want to bring in indra shekhar singh indra uh, a lot of this of course in theory sounds uh, doable it sounds really good on paper but when we actually talk about diversification of crops how do you actually make that change happen on the ground? How do you convince the farmer to move away from what he's been doing for several years uh, towards investing into, say, a new crop? Ms. Chopra, you're absolutely right. Everything said before sounds only good on paper. 
the industrial logic does not work for agriculture and that's why agri agri startups have not been able to penetrate the market that's why the government having all these flagship schemes for agri dollar production has failed to bring uh, the incomes of farmers up now when we talk about diversity how can we transition farmers from one crop to the other that we can only do if we ensure that the profit margin per acre remains the same now i have also a solution which is unlike the solutions presented before it there we need a new deal for farmers i'm not saying make msp a legal right but what i am saying is link the the kcc which is the kisan credit card to crops and keep crops as collaterals within the the kcc in this by doing this you will solve two problems you will solve the problem of indebtedness in the country and in the second way you will ensure that the crops get the maximum values what what additionally is needed is a price for announcement and as the other speakers have said we need a heavy investment in rural decentralized warehousing now the government has been trying to do that i think that the government and the private sector should work together this should not be an industry bias in fact industry should also be given fair quota farmers should be given fair quotas for creating these mechanisms and storage places where farmers can come seal their grain and keep that as collateral which they can then go to the bank and say well give us a 90% value loan of this money so we have our immediate needs met we can plant and sow for the next season and we have a 9 month period in which we can return the loan in case the loan in case the farmer actually sells it in the open market then the loan can be repaid to the bank and the interest also but in case the farmer is not able to pay then nafed and other agencies can come in and take that grain to the grain reserve and put it in the pds system now you may be thinking am i talking out of uh, out of my mind no this policy was there in the us between the 1942 and 1952 this is one of the best programs agrarian programs in the world that resulted in a 115% increase in net incomes of farmers in america battling the great depression american farmers were actually in a meltdown from the 1920s till the great depression and afterwards it's fdr and henry wallace who introduced these schemes in, and why would you and then you would ask me the question why are we talking about america and india why am i talking about this is because the msp idea itself came from america much of the indian uh, foundational agricultural practices whether starting from the green revolution to our seed legislation everything has come and been financed by the usda so it's not the first time that india would have inspired uh, from a us farm deal policy and actually implemented it so that's my simple solution the farmers would be happy if every farmer when they go to the bank to get their loans get their kccs can use their crops as collateral i think the problem of farm in come will finish if we link kcc to crops as collaterals now talking about other initiative of course there's a need for diversification of course there's a need for you know better sustainable agriculture i agree with all of that but how are you going to implement it you can only implement it using economic incentives and infrastructure building in the rural sector we talked about one of the panelists spoke about informal credit well if we actually have a partnership between the kcc the private banks and the farmers we will see that the penetration of formal uh, credit in institutions will increase we can model it on the the commodity credit cooperation of the us which is the ccc and how that played out until the 1970s so this is a great model that we can work on we have a member of parliament here who mentioned about you know the, the leaks in the system well there was the tops program of the government which was which need with sitaraman ji announced as a fret subsidy to improve infrastructure in tomatoes onions and potatoes what happened to that program i would request the member of parliament to please raise this question in parliament what happened to that scheme all that public tra taxpayer money that was spent to improve infrastructure in agriculture to improve crediting in agriculture it seems has flown away with the winds flown away with the monsoon we talked about gps come on give me a break guys last year we saw the worst erratic climatic zones no gps system could predict it no farmers were alerted that there's going to be floods in punjab there's going to be floods in himachal pradesh the ai system it's a myth it's a paper tiger and we have not we are not at the technological level where we can predict weather america cannot do it how can india and if india could why didn't it last year so these technological solutions are very very narrow and they have no penetration we should look at real time policy real time economic hard policy that can actually influence the farmer and the other thing is about getting all this technology in in farming the farmer who owns less than 1 acre or 1 and a half acre do you expect them to bear the cost of drone and all this precision farming that people are talking about no right. they cannot they cannot even manage food for their own children that's how bad it is that's why 800 people 800 million people need food rations getting this technology is an additional burden burden not just on our electricity grid but also on the farmers this is technological racism we should not stand for it okay himendra mats for bringing you back from the conversation um you know just understanding from your perspective like i said 
what is then the best way forward in terms of actual implementation of some sort of a scheme? If you were to today give a suggestion to the government that this is perhaps the first step that you need to take in terms of bridging uh, the income gap uh, of what the farmer is selling his produce at versus what the com consumer is uh, buying the produce at, what would that be as a first step? Yeah, as a first step, I have two suggestions. Uh, first and foremost, uh, create a robust digital and physical infrastructure for agriculture. Uh, to me, DPI, the way you know it reduced the transactional cost for a uh, lot of transactions that we are doing now uh, in, in urban India, there's a huge potential to reduce the transactional cost in rural India as well. The agri stack, which government of India has been building and a lot of state governments have taken it forward, is bringing the farmer ID, the farm ID, and the crop ID together. So with agri stack ID, you know who the farmer is, where he or she is located, the farm size, and the crop signatures. Okay. This is good enough data that's for a banker to, to figure out what is the potential credit worthiness of the farm. I'm not saying the farmer that has to come through a different score. And what is the potential uh, lending opportunity in a particular uh, for a particular farm, especially for small farms? Okay. The technology has advanced to a level where you can capture crop signatures 10 by 10 meters, and if you pay for the images, even by 1 by 1 meter. So the one acre myth, which a lot of people have, the technology doesn't work on one acre, it even works on half acre. There are enough evidences where farmer incomes have gone up by 10 to 15,000 rupees per acre because of adoption of technology so number okay. two the, the in, and the kind of impact that we've seen is what is 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 that at least 10 percent of indian farmers are digitally connected right and agri tech is not really old in india right it's only 10 15 years in fact us is learning from india how to build technology for small older farmers so it's the other way around right. the kind of technology that we're developing in india is going to be indigenous unlike copying from us as the previous panelists were saying the number two. So, what about the patents? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm going to leave the last word with Dr. Ashok Mittal. Dr. Mittal, you've heard uh, a lot of our agricultural experts also uh, sir, speaking and uh, some appeals have also been made to you uh, as a member of uh, parliament. I'd just like to understand from you, uh, can something then also be done to perhaps push India's young entrepreneurs into looking at certain systems, into looking at businesses that could perhaps directly benefit farmers as well. I'll have to again request you to unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, definitely our youth can definitely help farmers and even in the families, the farming family, there are youth also. So I would request all those youth who are already in the farming community that they can help their parents do a better job in their farms. We should not expect that outsiders will come and help them. So we, we can appeal to the youth of the farming community. Like they can do very, very small things to increase the income of their parents or the farmers. Regular soil testing is just very small example that will help okay, how much pesticide is to be used, how much fertilizer is to be used, and the cost is negligible. And it's done by the government labs which are spread across the country. Just for an example, in 2023-24, 66 lakh samples of soil testings were allocated, and out of which only 32 lakhs were collected, means half, and only 11 lakh card were made and this is as per the government data so this is yes. the status if we do this small activity correct we can improve and save a lot of cost on fertilizers and subsidies if we adopt certain integrated crop management practices for example biological control methods crop rotation pest resistant crop varieties it can reduce the dependence upon chemicals and fertilizers and further reduce our cost and then we can on the same piece of land we can have certain diversification income sources for the farmers just for example livestock rearing can happen agro tourism can happen 
non com enterprises like vermi compose epic center can happen and there are so many other things which we can do to reduce the dependence on these things and increase the income of farmers and the definitely youth in the farming community can help them do this the sustainable technology advancement can be taken uh, of uh, can be used and of course with the help of some cooperative society i can understand they can't buy themselves but when there are cooperative societies and the government began centers are there they can help them to make those facilities available at rental or at a subsidized rental there are so many things which can help reduce the cost and make farming more uh, more uh, profitable okay all right i'm going to bring in uh, indra you wanted to make a point as well in terms of us and india the us is highly advanced in big data and big agri data they are already mining their farmers data and selling it illegally when we look at the patent structure of agri tech we will find that all roads lead to rome so we have to be very careful before allowing this this new menace onto our agriculture system um mr Ma i'm sure mr ma'am i disagree with mr mathur on the agri tech and understanding i think there is again Uh, the one acre farmer if it is not in distress we would not be seeing a protest the biggest protest india has ever seen the world's ever seen on delhi's borders we've we've seen a revival of that protest of course agri tech people like to think in a particular bracket and but agriculture functions quite differently from it thank you okay yeah himendra mathur you were making a point uh, you know just giving you an opportunity uh, to respond but, but like i said we're trying to have a very logical cogent conversation on what can truly be done because keeping the protests and all aside uh, we are trying to make an attempt on newsx to actually understand uh, what are the problems what are the loopholes and what is it that we then as society need to now do because we do have a great entrepreneurial a wave that is going on in the country but agriculture or agri tech or agri entrepreneurship is not something that is too popular a stream uh, maybe because of the, the you know capital investment that is initially involved uh, in simply growing your own fruits and vegetables uh, and uh, you know other crops as well but perhaps something can be done where the farmer can meet with uh, young entrepreneurs Uh, and figure out a way forward that is beneficial for all absolutely absolutely uh, i am not saying technology alone can solve for everything but you'll be surprised upi was written off before before it was launched no so i think there are a lot of opportunities already re <laughs> being written for agri tech agri tech in india the average age of a startup is only 4 year 5 year old no the problem that we are talking is decades and centuries old give them time maybe a decade or so and i think we can all understand the value of technology so don't write it off right at the beginning in fact support entrepreneurs you know i think probably agri tech is the only sector which connect bharat with india you know it can drive a wave of rural entrepreneurship uh, you know someone said that the drones don't work drones work very well on uh, rentals absolutely the rental cost can make it affordable the uh, farmers save on agrochemicals and and for, for most important thing their exposure to harmful chemical agrochemicals is 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 uh, you know becomes very very limited uh, so i think that's one part of the solution i think second part of the solution is collectivization you know i think you know we need aggregation because of farm lands are aggregated the aggregation of farm produce which is anyway happening in mandis and of course there are some market linkage startups and corporates who are trying to build an aggregation model which is more demand driven and tiger neighbor which can hopefully reduce food losses reduce efficiency and hopefully farmer can get you know even today a lot of farmers sell to some of these startups because they get payment in time okay. within four months it's not that they are asking for higher price they just want payments in time number two aggregation of uh, uh, i would say uh, farm land which of course is a bit political but i would say that this is such a immense need of mechanization because farm labor is becoming more and more uh, difficult to get especially at the time of sowing and harvest so farmers are and actually renting out a lot of machines you know harvester which is a, a very very expensive machine and no small farmer probably can buy it but they rent it out because the cost of harvesting yes. through the harvester is far less than the manual labor right uh, okay. and the collectivization of farmers which is in a way triggered by the fpo fpo momentum which is Uh, sort of you know scheme by government of india which nabard and sfac are implementing again early days i'm not saying 
Yes. You know, is, uh, uh, is good or everything is bad, but I think we all are learning. And I think as FPO started picking up the thing that I was talking okay. about, our old companies and hopefully okay, they're able. Okay. To all right. Okay, Indra, I have, I have 30 seconds. Mr. Mr. Opra, we need supply management. Mr. Opra, this opportunity presents, you know, what's happening in India right now. India needs to have a, a sort, a, a simple supply management. India has never invested in supply management and we need to have a supply management that's not from the industry perspective, but from a three-party perspective. The farmer, the small trader also, the, the big traders and the government. Without it, without which the ship will sink. If we look too lopsided towards one direction, I think there's going to be a big, big problem. India in the 70 years, this is the golden moment in which if we fix our supply management using price floors, using crops as a collateral, all these other side things will actually bloom and not sink. Okay. Thank you. All right. On that note, I've completely run out of time, but I thank all of our panelists for joining us today for the first episode of the Real Kisan Kalyan series that NewsX has launched in light of uh, what's happening in the nation, but uh, in an attempt to do something positive with the conversation that's coming about. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.